Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Miss Donovan. We are going to finish up this section. It is section 2.4 and we are looking at page 94. So we're going to start finishing notes on page 94 and there's only one problem left, but I am going to do a couple other examples that you can do the work for in the margins because this last example is a little bit, probably the most difficult of the section. So it's going to be a little bit confusing. So I want to do several examples for you guys to follow along with. Now this one, um, before you guys had to find the discount, so you were given the original price and the percent of discount, and then you had to find the final price right here. Where did my mouse go? Oh, right here. So you had this, the original price and the discount, and then you subtracted the two to find the final price. That's what we did in the first part of this section. But now we have the final price and what the discount was, and we want to find out what is the original price. So this is a little bit tricky. There's going to be a few steps here, and there are several ways you can do it. So if you want, you can read through the book and see how they work it out using ratios. But I'm going to show you another way that we can do this. So if you think about it, she had a 25% discount. So that means if the original price was 100%, and it got discounted 25%, then she's paying 75% of that original price for this hockey equipment. So she's paying 75% of the original price, and that equals the final price. So essentially what we have here is 0.75 times the original price. I'm just going to call it X and that equals our sale price or our final price. So 75% of the original price equals the sale price. So all we have to do is divide both sides of this by 0.75 to get x by itself. I don't know. Have you guys solved equations like this before? I'm not sure what you guys learned in sixth grade or if you learned how to solve equations. But basically, when we do this, we get x equals $230 which means the original price of that item was $230. So $230, we take 25% off, and it equals the final price. So another way to think of it is this. Whatever the final price is, you can divide it by the, basically, 100%, oops, 100% oh, minus the discount. And this is essentially how you're going to set these up. The final price divided by 100% minus whatever the discount is. Because what we're really doing here is dividing by the percent we paid of the initial cost. So we paid 75% of this initial cost to get 172.50. Or we took 25% off, but taking 25% off is the same as paying 75%. That makes sense. Let's look at another example. A tablet is on sale for 30% off the original price. If the sale price is $239.89, what is the original price? So what we can do is take the sale price and divide by 100% minus the discount amount of 30%. So our sale price is $239.89. We're going to divide by not 70%, but 0.7. So not 7.7. $239.89 divided by 0.7 gives us $342.70. So the final cost, or excuse me, the original cost of this item was 
we got 30% off, so we only had to pay $239.89. Okay, let's look at one more. A swimsuit is on sale for $45.50. If the sale price is discounted 5% from the original price, what was the original price? So again, we're gonna take the sale price and divide by 100% minus 5%, which is 95%. So you got 5% off, which means you paid 95% of the initial cost. Does that make sense why it's 95? Because 5% is taken off of that 100% for your sale. So we take 45.50, and I'm going to divide that by 0.95. Again, not 95, but 0.95. And that gives us $47.00. And 90 cents, or actually no, 89 cents. I don't have to round up. So 47.89 is the original price. And again, it should make sense that your original price is higher because you get a discount and this is the sale price. So your answer should always be higher in problems like this. If we're looking for the original price, if there was a discount, it should be higher than the sale price. So 47.89 seems reasonable because we didn't get too much of a discount, just a small discount. So you guys pause the video and do the check problem on the bottom of page 94. And next to that problem, write in the margins what you think a good name for my YouTube channel should be. And I will see you guys tomorrow.